rejoice before Him. Open up your heart and rejoice before Him. Open up your heart and rejoice before Him. For the King is our God. Rise and sing ye children of Zion. Lord has delivered thee. Arise and sing ye children of Zion. For the Lord has delivered thee. Open up your heart and rejoice before Him. Open up your heart and rejoice before Him. Open up your heart and rejoice before Him. For the King is our God. Open up your heart and rejoice before Him. Open up your heart and rejoice before Him. Open up your heart and rejoice before Him, for the King is our God. Arise and sing, ye children of Zion, for the Lord has delivered me. Arise and sing, ye children of Zion, for the Lord.
love and your mercy, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We lift our praises unto you, God. How we love you, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. We magnify you. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we sing glory unto you, God. We sing glory unto you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship, we worship you, God. heard this course before it just simply says healing is here can you make those words any bigger <laughs> okay Freedom is here. 
this morning and her husband's real real sick has been for several days won't go to the doctor so she asks us to lift him up Amen. Merle is on her way back here from Michigan she's excited she's going to go to her son Mike and Hickas and we got some leads on an apartment hopefully it'll work out for her she fills out an application tomorrow does anyone else have a need today Jennifer Wellborn is really sick. Yes. My sister's husband, Jimmy Ballou, is having heart trouble. And he needs a heart valve repaired. They were going to do it uh, Friday, but they didn't even have enough doctors in house. So they're waiting till Monday to get that job done. Okay. I did get a text this week from a cousin of mine that lives at Rogersville. And she said in January they diagnosed her with a heart murmur. And come to find out, she's going to have to have tri triple bypass this wow. week. So she's younger than I am. So I lift her up. Her first name is Naomi. Let's just take all these needs to the yes. Lord. Father, we just yes, thank you Lord, right now. Lord, we thank you because Praise the healer God. is thank in the house. The Not just in this four-walled building, but healer. this yes. house that you've made all the individual houses that you dwell in the healer is in them and lord we just lift up jimmy Ballou to you we lift up jeff greenway we lift up naomi carr we lift up merle who isn't sick but she is on her way and we just ask for traveling mercy for her lord we just thank you that you live in all of these people and that healing can't stay 
where you are at. Thank we thank, thank you, Father. Lord, because you provided Hallelujah. Hallelujah. an option for us to believe. We can either receive it, believe thank and receive it, or we can cast it aside and do without. And Lord, we just right now, we just pray on the behalf of all of these. Praise God. And if thank there's anyone else that we've forgotten about today, Lord, we just ask you to, we know that you never forget. You always remember. And we thank you, Lord, that healing will come to them in the mighty name of Jesus in your power. Let's sing this song again. Hallelujah. Sickness can't stay any longer. Your perfect love is casting out fear. You are the God of all power. It is your will that my life is healed. Sickness can't stay any longer. Your love is love is casting out fear. to the course please I reach my hands to the heavens I lift my eyes where my help comes from I look to you my rock my healer I trust in Aren't you glad you have someone to trust Amen. in? Hallelujah. He's always there. Thank you, Lord. you know, and all we have to do is just talk to him. Just like if I was talking to Linda Buckner. Just one-on-one. -on -one. And you know what? Sometimes she and I might be talking and we might, our minds might be wandering off on, as we're even talking. God doesn't do that. Amen. He's always right there. Hallelujah. Sing that chorus again. I reach my hands to the heavens. If I Sickness 
things can't stay any longer. I like that. Can't stay. Hallelujah. His love is casting out all fear. Hallelujah. He's a God of all power. Hallelujah. It is your will that my life is healed. One more time. Hallelujah. Sickness can't stay any longer. Your purpose is casting out fear. You are the God of all power. It is your will that my life is healed. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you made all those provisions for us. It's not what we do, but what you accomplished on the cross. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for the finished work. Hallelujah. And we can be able to receive it and enjoy. Hallelujah. In these days here in this life. Lord, we thank you for it. We praise you that you are our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're wonderful, Lord. You're marvelous. Glory to God. You meet every need. You are our supplier. You're the God that's more than enough. Hallelujah. We receive from you today, God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we glorify you. You may be seated. You know, this song says that sickness can't stay any longer. Your perfect love is casting out fear. You know, oftentimes fear of something is worse than the something. So, yeah, in order to get rid of the something, he's got to cast out that fear. To cast out that fear, love. There is nothing that love can't conquer. Love conquers all. It'll conquer that fear. That fear has its roots that, that sickness has its roots in fear. You know, if, if somebody tells you that you have cancer, that word cancer is going to strike fear in you. Instead of healing, it's going to strike fear. Until we're rooted and grounded in that love, then that love will cast that fear right out, and that healing will come because sickness can't stay any longer. Amen. Love Amen. is gone. So sickness is, I mean, love is not gone. Excuse me about Lord. Fear is gone. So love hangs in. Love conquers. And love does the healing. Amen. That's the message of this song. If you don't get anything else out of this worship, get that. Because that's good stuff yes. right there. Amen. 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 There's a song we haven't sung in a long, long, long time. It says, God is building a house. And you're the house he's building. This is not the house of God, actually. This is where the church comes to worship. You are the church. So I don't know if I, I guess we can remember the tune. Can you find that uh, God is building a house? I believe that's the name of it. Let's try it. God is building a house which creation shall dwell.
before you sit down. have a testimony of the, the wonderful works of the Lord. Anybody got a testimony you want to share? While you're thinking, I've got one. Am I, let me just use this mic now. This is not even on anyway. Mute me. Uh, I wrecked my pickup this week. Kind of, sort of. Several hundred dollars worth anyway. I was coming out of Sap Brothers. And they've got that new interchange down there, and it's one lane. There's a car speeding up through there, and I was going pretty healthy speed myself. And they saw it was one lane, and they was going to turn south. Well, they come over in my lane, and I whipped it over to keep from getting sideswiped. And I hit that cement embankment. That I went airborne, and I figured half my bumper would be laying in the road, but there's traffic behind me. I just kept going, and, and we didn't collide, but I hit that cement. And I screeched my tires, and I come on home, and I could tell I was pulling a little bit, and I got home as the tire was going down. And so the next day, I aired it up and drove it to the shop. And, and uh, he said, your, your tire is fine. You've split your rim. But you've messed up your frame, and they got to put it on a stretching machine and stretch it back out. So I can't tell you how many times I've needed that pickup since it's been in the shop. <laughs> But anyway, it's all good. But uh, I guess I hung onto the steering wheel, and my arm has gotten so sore I can hardly lift it up. So that wheel been bad, I guess. But anyway, it's all good. God's good. Amen? He helps us through it all. Anybody else have a testimony? Oh, I've got another testimony. I don't know if you remembered, but last Sunday, between getting up time and leaving for church, I used a box of Kleenexes because my nose is just running and snee I sneezing. And uh, I forget, maybe Brian prayed for me. Somebody prayed for me last Sunday. And if you notice, I went all the way through the message. I told the camera guys, I said, now get ready to hit that pause button. If I blow my nose or wipe my nose, I said, hit pause on that. <clears throat> and it saved uh, a lot of editing. <laughs> so anyway, I didn't ha they didn't have to do that at all the whole time. So I praise the Lord. He's faithful. He's always faithful. Amen. Anybody else got a testimony? Connie had her hand up. Connie? All right. Um, so last Friday, it was around bedtime for the boys, and I was changing Sterling's diaper, and Archer decided to take his pants off and fall on his face. So I turn around, and I look at him, and I forgot to have my hand on Sterling, and Sterling rolls off our bed. <laughs> and he was unconscious for like a minute and a half and so I ended up having to race him to Children's Mercy and on my way to Children's Mercy I was just praying to God like please don't let my baby have a brain injury please don't let him have any kind of bleed or anything and so we're sitting in the Children's Mercy hospital and every we were there for six hours and I was like I'm just happy that they're not pulling me back because that means that something's truly wrong with him and so I'm just like the longer I sit here the better my baby's doing thank God <laughs> and then we finally get pulled back and they do a CT on his head and he has no bleeds he just got two fractures on his right side so we're just happy that Amen. that's all it is the so, prayer did it yes thank definitely. God for good nurses amen how many have had babies roll off the bed besides us <laughs> about everybody has it's kind of part of growing up, I tell you. And, and mamas get really scared, and, and uh, we want everything to be right. So, But you did the right thing. Go to children's mercy. But what did you do going down there? You prayed. Amen. Praying all the way. Anybody else? Somebody else got hand up. All right. I just want to thank the Lord this morning. Uh, I was back there hanging up that sign back there, and it fell, and Jer Brother Jeremy was back there. <laughs> I was kind of staggering around. He was ready to grab me, man. <laughs> I want to tell you, I'll wibble and a wobble, but it don't fall down. Or at least I haven't yet. 
But I just thank the Lord this morning when I woke up to this beautiful day he gave me. Yes. I want to thank him for air to breathe Amen. and a good life. And I thank God for a good family and everything. Amen. Thank God for his presence in my yes. life. Amen. Very good. Anybody else? I want to thank the Lord. Um, <laughs> talking about babies, but when uh, our son Caleb was little, uh, we lived in the house before this one out in Independence, and our basement door was open, and and uh, and he was just a little guy, and but he was in a a walker, and uh, he uh, went down them stairs. Now that back, the, our stairs stairs were carpeted, but but still he he came out with no injuries whatsoever. He didn't even cry that I remember, and uh, I just praise the Lord for that, and yeah, and. Also, when he was little, um, we don't know for sure what it was, whether it was a high fever, whether it was an antibiotic, but when he was little, he had, uh, had a reaction, and it would cause spasms, I believe it was, wasn't it? And so uh, uh, he, we took him to Children's Mercy, and, and of course they uh, told us these things, and, and anyway, they put him on a... a a uh, medication that was called Ac, well, Acthor, something, something like that. But anyway, he had to have uh, what was it? It to start out a shot per day, and then it would gradually go down to you know like three, a, three a week, and or, or or not, not three a day was it? But it was once, once a day, and then, then it, it just kept being reduced, but. By the by, the time it was in, it ended, and uh, Barb wouldn't give him. I I had she forced me to give him to him, and that was hard. But I I did it because I, you know, he needed it. But I just praise the Lord because those, they never ever came back. They said there's a possibility, but I just want to give God the glory and praise that He is a healthy young man, and that I just thank God in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I have something to say. Also, <laughs> so um, I passed out this week after something, after taking some medicine, and uh, the Lord was working with me on a lot, right? So there's no reason of why this happened. Um, I take my, take my meds, I go walking to the door and put my hand on the door lights out fall back hit my head up against the wood on the corner i should have split my head open um my wife comes running in and i open my eyes like nothing was wrong <laughs> i mean it, it absolutely nothing was wrong i knew everything that happened god had already told me everything that happened really I was working on stuff and God basically got to a point where I just needed to reset. And it doesn't matter how hard you fight, how you struggle with any of your walk in Christ and walk in life. God will, it's so easy. Our lives are so fragile. Amen. And, and our, our love, we need to spread that the time that we can because it is so minute and small and fragile of an existence that it could have been over like that. And it just brought a lot of enlightenment to me and a lot of stuff I've been dealing with. I just wanted to share. Amen. All right, who else? Good deal. Who else? <laughs> she can, Linda can read right in you. <laughs> well, I have one. Of, it was kind of recent, a couple of weeks ago. It's, I was coming out of our driveway. My husband was, I was, I was heading to the airport to go somewhere, and uh, I, we were already on the street. And this lady on the intersection, I mean, she just kept coming in her truck. She did not stop. And so he pulled over on to the edge, you know, like you're trying to get out of the way. And if she had hit, it would have just like smashed me to smithereens. But I'll tell you what I remembered when um, 
I remember what you always say about sometimes people drive and they've got something on their mind, so don't get mad at them. Forgive them for not paying attention, but, but that's what was the first thing come to my mind. Isn't that amazing that when you hear something here, we all talk, it, those little things come to your mind to, to help you to remember to know that other people have stuff on their minds too. But um, that was one. And then my husband, he um, was coming. We, he, his other knee was hurting, and so he wanted to switch sides on the vehicle. And he was trying to grab the thing to pull in to get in. And he landed on the ground. And, and the worst, and I don't know why, but your mind just goes to the worst road. Like, oh, my God, it's like blood all over the ground. You know, this, that. You just go to the worst. And, yes, he sprained his ankle, but it was not like blood all over the ground so i'm just saying and he's getting and it's getting better but i'm just saying there is those moments of life that they're just like man they just capture you up and when it's over it's like thank god he's kind of over it to help you through you know you don't avoid them but somehow you get through them yeah yeah anybody else I have one more. Okay. Um, back in 2004, and um, at that particular time, um, Barb and I and the family, we had all gotten ready to go to church that morning, and uh, I had a really bad attack, and, and I was hurting really bad in my stomach, and we ended up missing church, and Barb took me to the hospital at that time and and they couldn't find anything and uh, actually we ended up being there 12 hours and I was in so much pain they were giving me a, a shot one shot every hour of, of uh, heroin I believe it morphine morphine is what it was and it and it and it didn't ever touch my never touched my pain never touched it and uh, finally late that night they give me um, a shot of uh, Demerol, and and it worked. <laughs> uh, needless to say, they sent me home, and and it wore off. Barb had went to work, so I, uh, I I stayed awake the rest of the night and was miserable on the bathroom floor, rolling around until she got home. And, and then uh, I, did we go to urgent care after that? But anyway, they. Uh, um, they told me I better go to the hospital, and anyway, I went back, and I, uh, uh, my, I think my birthday was on a Tuesday. Rachel was probably about four, and Sarah was about two, and uh, anyway, um, they, the chief doctor at that time uh, said he was going to do exploratory surgery. He felt around on my stomach, and he said, there's something wrong. I don't, he said, I don't know what it is. But he says, uh, I'm just going to open you up and look. And it ended up being a, uh, a growth from the umbilical cord on my intestine. And it had wrapped around and it strangled it. And uh, he, uh, he took and cut out a foot of my intestine. And, and if it had went one day longer, it had already started turning brown and was, not, you know, and it it would have, you know, deteriorated and poisoned my body. And uh, anyway, uh, uh, I just want to thank the God, uh, thank God, you know, all these years that my life is extended, but to come that close to death, you know, I just want to thank the Lord and give him praise, you know. I, I love worshiping God, and he deserves all the glory. Yeah. Just praise him and I thank you. You know, there's a lot of things that God does for us that we really uh, not even aware of. I've told you this story before, but I was at a rest area over in uh, when I drove for Walmart over in Illinois, and I got back in the truck and took off. And the Lord says, as you was coming out of the rest area, as you was going in the, to the restroom you walk past a serial killer. He just spoke that to me. I don't know who he was. Uh, another time the Lord spoke up in me. and You know, when, when I 
<clears throat> when I say the Lord spoke to me, I, I didn't hear no boom out of the sky. I hear an inner voice that's not my thoughts. He said this. He said a lot of people get a cold or the sniffles, and they really had a, a terminal disease, and they didn't even know it. And I healed them. And we sit and like we'll ask for testimonies and nobody stands up, nobody says anything. We just think how many times, how many times did we miss an accident? How many times did we meet a drunk driver? He was uh, happened to be on his side of the road when we met him. How many times stuff like that happens? We never take a minute to thank the Lord. The Bible says in everything give thanks. We ought to have a praise on our lips. I went to Linda and I, when we dated, it was going to church. We didn't go to movies. We didn't go to anything else. We went to church. We drove 100 miles to church in spring or to Poplar Bluff. And the pastor said, anybody got a testimony? The whole church would stand up and scream out their testimony. It just sounded like chatter. You couldn't it. understand. But God did. Everybody testified at the same time. I thought that was pretty neat. You know, everybody has just had something to say, something to glorify the Lord about in their lives, something that happened. So uh, beware of that. Just think about things that could have happened and didn't. God is always faithful. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'll uh, change mics. <clears throat> Uh, I have a sign-up sheet for the ladies for the uh, banquet for June 15th, so be sure today before you leave that you sign it so we can get a good head count, and if you got someone you want to invite, invite as many as you want. You guys are perfect. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you all. You got some good writing pens. If this one poops out, where's, where's another one out over here? Okay. <clears throat> I have a little illustration today. Hopefully it'll mean something to you. Uh, thank you. Let's all stand again. Let's do our confession of faith today. I have ears to hear and eyes to see what the Spirit's saying to me. I will be attentive to the dealing of the Spirit. I am learning that I'm God's purpose in the earth. I thank you, Lord, for a baptism of the Spirit within me. All right, you may be seated. I'd like to speak on the subject of vessels in the house of the Lord. Uh, I want to debunk something here real quick, and, and, and please don't be offended. Because this has been 30 years of, of just uh, meditating and thinking on it. and uh, There's something that I grew up with, and probably most of us grew up with, that uh, we're a free moral agent. How many grew up with that teaching? Okay, Two, uh, two or three of you are real honest, <laughs> and the rest of you are lying. No, <laughs> no we all grew up with that idea. Uh, a free moral agent... Uh, uh, everything's based on our decision. That's incorrect. We leave out an important factor. We leave out the factor that God is sovereign. There's a lot of things that we blamed on the devil for that God allowed in our life. So another little part of that that I'd like to debunk is... Uh, uh, free will. Everybody has free will. You'd be surprised how much stuff that you've done God has or orchestrated. Now I believe in limited free will. I just don't believe in total free will. God has stepped up and God has did things in, in my life without my request, without my permission. You know when God said let there be light, he wasn't asking permission. He's making a statement. And you know, 
and God's voice, the whole universe honored it. I went to Longview to college and the, the science teacher over said, said the universe is still expanding at the speed of light. It's still obeying the voice of God. So, I don't want to take total all your free will away from you, but I'm just coming to believe that, that God is bigger than we've all expected him and thought he was. Now, personally, I'm not putting you in my box. I just leave the devil out because the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. As long as I believe in God and believe in the devil, I've got two things going. And I'm unstable. The Bible said, don't let that man think he'll receive anything of the Lord. So I just try to base everything on God. If, let me say it this way. If I err, I want to err on the side of God. Okay? If I'm too much that way, just give me room. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm just happy. So we're talking about the vessels today. We'll just let uh, uh, Crystal put the scriptures up there for us. <coughs> Uh, when we get to them. <clears throat> but anyway, I just want to talk about them. Vessels are made on a wheel. Anybody watch a potter making anything? Okay. I watched, we, Linda and I was at Branson, and we went to the potter's shop, and we watched him make pottery, and he, he took a, a, a cup and made that thing spin around that cup, and he, sometimes he'd take his thumb, and he made designs in it, you know, and get extra, he'd throw it over there in a the bucket and so forth. So I, I was very interesting to me how that the potter's wheel worked. Now where I get some of this ideas that was not all free will. The Bible tells us the potter has control. We don't tell the potter how to make it. That was one of the first scriptures that helped me to realize I'm not totally in control of this. I don't tell the potter what to do. He tells me. He, he makes us. We don't make him. So in 2 Timothy, we're going to try to make this as short as we can. This is, this is uh, my Cliff Notes uh, uh, version of the vessels. It's in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Next verse says... If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto what? Honor. What's the next word? Sanctified and meet or able for the master to use and prepared unto every good what? Every good work. So we want to understand that there's another process in this potter as he makes pottery. When he, right before he finishes it, do you know what he does with it? Anybody? He puts it in a kiln, K-I-L-N. Uh, for some of you that don't know what a kiln is, I, I lived and pastored down at Salem for 14 years, and they have a charcoal plant. There was the, they were the largest charcoal plant in the United States that made it and bagged it and everything. There's other plants that are bigger that bag it, but they made it and bagged it, and they had about uh, 50 kiln. The kiln was just about as half as big as this church, or this bit, this and guys would bring in cordwood and they'd stack it in there and they would fire that and they'd fire it for 21 days. And a lot of that would be charred and wouldn't make, and then they'd go through another process to get your little charcoal briquettes. But they first put it in a kiln. Well, a potter, when he makes pottery, he, he finishes all, puts it in a kiln. Now for you to help you understand, it's kind of like a minute, this would be a miniature ex explanation of a kiln, kind of like a barbecue grill. You know, you put the lid down, it's closed, you it's, it fire it up, and Jamie's real good at that. We having that today? I'm, I'm on duty. Oh, you're on duty, okay. <laughs> he makes some wonderful stuff on the grill. Anyway, uh, they, they, put it in the, they put this vessel in a kiln, and we want to kind of... Uh, I want you to see this from a spiritual aspect, not just a physical. The Bible is just full of pictorial language. 
Everything in the Bible is an analogy of something in the spirit. Uh, just a little little um, side note here. Uh, you know, in the Old Testament, when they left Egypt, remember they had ten plagues, and finally, finally, uh, 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 you know, God called Moses to deliver the children of Israel. And the Bible says God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Didn't say the devil done it. it said God hardened his heart. Because there was a message that he wanted, that God intended for all of Egypt to see. And we'll talk about that a little later. But anyway, in the process of making, um, making pottery, it has to be fired in the kiln. That's part of the process. Sometimes in our walk with the Lord, we feel like we're in a fire, right? How many has ever been there besides me? Don't leave me up here by myself. You know, you've, you've been there too. The, the Bible talks about the, the, the trial is like a fire. But pass the test. I see people just get mad and throw things and, you know, pass the test. So, in a great house, there's different kind of vessels. We just read that. We're going to talk about the vessel of honor first. <clears throat> vessel of honor. Now when Paul said this to Timothy he didn't have to give an explanation because Timothy had already been used to taking the five gallon container down to the spring or down to the, to the stream and getting it full of water and bringing it back. Timothy already knew what he was talking about so, so God didn't have to explain or Paul didn't have to explain to Timothy when he said uh, there's in a great house there's vessels of, of honor and dis, um, uh, vessels of gold and silver and so on. So Paul or Timothy is already used to, used to doing that. Each vessel had an important purpose. Now a few years ago, I taught on this many, many years ago, and I, I went over to at least Summit and I had them to make me some pottery. This is just a little tiny example of uh, uh, vessel that they used back in Timothy's day it would be much bigger than that it would carry five gallon of water and had a very important purpose now this is set back there in Joyce's cabinet a long time and I noticed it's got a split on it and got something going on there but anyway when they first made it didn't have all that <laughs> but anyway uh, the vessel of honor was for a particular purpose they would take this vessel full of water and they'd bring it to a low bench inside the temple door or and the Judean home had them inside their door and it was it was for the people who came in the door to refresh themselves you know they didn't come in a nice car and air conditioner with an air conditioner in the summertime probably their feet was dirty and their hands might have been dirty so they refreshed themselves there at the door now, we don't need a, a, a five-gallon container at the door. You're the container. You're the container. Uh, I appreciate Rick and we have This is graduation season. I understand that. We've got a lot of people out going to graduation. Rick and Kay and, and Linda and this Linda, two Lindas generally greet at the doors. And they have a smile. You don't want somebody to stand at the door with no frown on their face. You know, they all got smiles. But it got to go past that. We want you in the congregation, when you see somebody come in, especially if you don't know them, go to them and greet them. Say, my name is whatever, Hannah. Or, my name is George or my name is Mike. Greet them and let them know, welcome here. You are the container now. It's no longer this understand that but this container had a special job now since I don't have enough we're gonna let this represent not only the vessel of honor but uh, I, I want you to consider you being the vessel you know Paul said in 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 we have this treasure in earthen vessels 
You're the vessel God's using today. You know, in the Old Testament, they had dead sacrifices. They offered a bull or a goat or a lamb. In, in the New Testament, the Bible says we're living sacrifices. God's not interested in a dead sacrifice. I, I listen to a preacher a lot. I'm, I'm listening at least two of his sermons every day. One will get up and one I go to bed with. And he said, uh, and he pastors in Gainesville, Florida, and he said, you know, we jump and shout and we holler and we run the aisles. And he said, I, I just jump and shout along with them. He said, I, I, my shorts are plumbed down around my, my, my socks. <laughs> he said, one lady, a little Jewish lady goes to her church and she come up to him and said, Brother Arno? He said, yes, ma'am. He said, all this jumping and shouting and hooping and hollering and waving your hands, I don't think that's necessary. He said, the Bible says do everything decently in order. And he said, well, you go to Arlington Cemetery. They're all perfect. All those tombstones are all perfect order. The grass is mowed around. They don't make a sound. <laughs> the Bible says the dead praise not the Lord. So if you're sitting in the church service and you ain't praising the Lord, maybe you're kind of like dead <laughs> your heart's beating amen you're not dead physically but sometimes we get dead spiritually we get involved in our job or playing a musical instrument or whatever and we forget to worship we forget to give God praise praise tills the ground for worship praise just does lots of things for us I want us to envision ourselves as, as vessels. Let this be an analogy of who we really are. We must remember, this building is not the house of the Lord. You are. That's why we sang that song a while ago. God is building a house with us. The Bible talks about, in my Father's house are many what? Mansions. And amplified Bible says dwelling places. In my Father's house are many many mansions, many dwelling places. If it were not so, I'd have told you. But he says, I prepare a place for you. Not where I'm going, but where I am, you may be too. Where I am. Where he is in the spirit. Where he is in the spirit, you can be too. He's provided that in the kingdom of God that we can be just like Jesus. And I was thinking on the way to service today, we have so many laws in our nation that works against us trusting God. If you've got kids, especially. In my day, we didn't have that, as many laws against us. Kid, people get turned in for not taking their kids to the doctor and so forth. We didn't do that. I was having a, they would call it a seizure now, they call it a, what do you call it? Convulsions. Because I was just jerking and I was just six months old and I couldn't stop. Dad was cutting logs and mom just laid on the horn. She didn't honk, she just laid on it, just stayed on it. And dad knew something was wrong and he didn't, he said, I didn't get in the truck, follow the road, I come running. He scooped me up, got in the car and it's five miles to the doctor. They passed the doctor on up with another five miles to our pastor. They run in there and he helped me in his arms and prayed for me and stopped. That's what we did then. We had no insurance. We've got to please all of those rules and regulations now to keep from lawsuits. When that big tree fell on my dad, dad was cutting this great big tree and it, when it fell, it hit another tree and sprang back and that big tree fell on right on my dad's ankle. It didn't break it, it crushed it. And he laid out there and hollered all day long till he lost his voice. So when they shut the mill down that night, they're looking for dad and he said, they come pretty close to him. I said, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> but he couldn't say that, he'd lost his voice for hollering all day long. Anyway, they found him and guys got under his arm, took him to the truck and they got him to the hospital and Dad said, now listen, he took the x-rays, he said, your bone is just crushed. It's not broken, it's crushed. And Dad said, just give me crutches. It's church night. 
Wednesday night, they're going to pray for me and I'll be healed. And so he said, bring any papers out here. I'm going to sign, I'll sign any papers I need to sign to not cause my boss to be liable. He had nothing to do with it. It was all me. So I gave him crutches and there's making fun of dad all the time. Got home, dad and mom brought him to church. Come up before church ever started. Dad's on his crutches. Told them the story and they've laid hands on him and prayed for him. And my dad played the piano at our church. It had a set of, uh, had a, a what? Bowl of okay. flowers sitting on top of the piano. There's no upright piano. And some of the men at church would think, now them's gonna fall tonight. Dad played that piano so hard them that bouquets up there like it, and that's going to fall tonight. But it never did. Well, Dad played the piano that night, was healed. Called his boss the next morning because he rode with him to work. He said, I'll be, I'll cut logs tomorrow in the morning. He said, you what? Well, that guy didn't, wasn't a believer in the Lord. Well, as we call it. But he told a lot of people, he said, you can't tell me God don't heal because... Pat Crunk cut logs the next day and he was completely healed. God is faithful. But those days we learn to trust more. We've got all these rules and regulations and I don't know how to say this nice but the pharmaceutical industry has us in a chokehold. We're almost afraid to do anything other than that. Talk, my brother ran a load for me this week and he picked up a load in Joplin and he said, I, I was picked up this load right by this black guy that was there and he said, he's from Africa. And he said, uh, we have a doctor in Africa that healed 55 cases of cancer with just herbs. But he just come up missing. That's the kind of chokehold the pharmaceutical industry has on the public. He came up missing. He said most of the time he used black, what was it? Uh, black seed oil. He said it'll, it'll heal anything. So he gave David a picture of what that looks like. I'm sure David will get some, <laughs> not that he's sick, but you know, it's just, he said there's so much out there God has made for us in, in the plant kingdom that will do so much for us. Anyway, be that as may. You're the vessel God is working with. You're the vessel. Are you that vessel that sits, that's that God's presence? In these was water. But I want to tell you something. In you is the Spirit of God. Is the Spirit of God in you in, in a way that when people come in, they feel blessed, they feel honored, they feel like people love me. I talked to somebody, I don't even remember who it was. Uh, now, I think it's somebody here. <laughs> I can't remember. Anyway, they, no, it was somebody else, but they did come here and told me. said, we went visit the church and no one shook our hand. No one said hello. No one spoke one word to us. I said, you go back and just try it one more time. I ain't going back there. <laughs> you know, people want to feel loved. Amen? You don't have to know people to hug their neck. You don't have to know people. Be a vessel of honor that we're not going to set a bucket in front of the door. You're the bucket. Amen? You're the one that's holes and houses the very presence of God. So you are the vessel of honor. <clears throat> this works in the spirit. Uh, see where I was at my notes. Oh, another story I was going to tell you about my dad. My dad came up here to work with my, my son and it was icy and my dad fell and broke his hip. Took him to the hospital and they video, uh, not video, what? X-rayed it and it was broken, and uh, so dad was on crutches, and he's on, wanting to go back to Arkansas where he lived. I wasn't raised in Arkansas. Dad went down there to pastor after Lynn and I was married. But anyway, he needed to go back home, but the week ended up, and he was staying with us, and I said, Dad, you want to ride with us to church? And he said, no, I'll drive. I said, 
Well, you got a broken hip. Oh, I'll survive. I said, just don't be late. And so he was late. We were in about the second song, at least way up into the first song. You know, if you notice, Linda sings songs over and over and over and over. You know why we do that? We want to sing it till it's you. Not because it's some word on the screen. We want you to sing it till it's you. I told you about the Nazarene preacher in the church at, when I pastored uh, oh, Martin City. Sat on the back row and uh, come up to me after church and says, Son? He said, you know how long you sung that song? I said, don't have any idea. He said, you sung it 32 minutes. And don't have four, four lines in the course, and I couldn't even think of the last two. I, I got up in front of the church, and it, Robin, you and Linda were probably there <laughs> for that, but <laughs> you didn't know the story because he told me after church. But anyway, uh, I got up at church, and I said, I can only think of two lines, but I've hummed this song all afternoon. We're going to start it, and maybe somebody can finish it. And we, I said, just hum what you don't know. You see, that's, that's what we call following the Spirit. The Spirit can do more in a few minutes than I can do in a lifetime. So we sung the two lines, and pretty soon I think Linda thought it would be off. Somebody thought of the rest of the two lines, and we sung it, and we sung it, and we sung it, and we sung it, and we sung it. He said, I was so bored. You kept singing that song and singing that song and singing that song. But about 30 minutes, he started crying. He said, you broke my shell. You broke my shell. He said, I felt the Spirit of God for the first time in years because you kept singing it till you broke my shell. It's so important, church, that we follow the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit wants to minister to you. We're not up here just singing to be singing. I'm proud of these girls that come up here and they don't know their songs. <laughs> they just learn them as we sing them. And I appreciate their willingness to try and learn. And that spirit carries over. Their willingness to sing when they don't even know the song. Sometimes we pull out old songs we hadn't sung in years and they don't know them at all. <laughs> you know? Hannah, 